I'm really excited to have uh, my friend Leo Lana joining us. Leo is an amazing biologist. He's an amazing photographer. He's a National Geographic explorer. And with uh, any luck, I'll be seeing him in Rio uh, in a few weeks. I'm going to bring him in live right now to talk to us a little bit about the amazing insect species that he studies. Hey, Leo, how are you? Hey, Joe, how are you? Hi, everybody. It's great to be here with you. Yeah, it's great to see you. It's been a while since we connected. I think last time we chatted, at least face to face, was in the Azores, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's great to, to yeah. see you here now. Yeah, thanks for having me also at this event for Darwin 200. It's great because my work is a bit connected to where Darwin has been. I work in the Atlantic rainforest on the coast of Brazil, but in lands, not in the ocean. All right, perfect. Well, I'm going to let you take over for a little bit because your work, your photos speak for themselves. They're absolutely incredible. So, uh, yeah, if you want to go ahead and share your screen, and then, of course, we'll have okay, some question sure. time. Uh, I and have if a possible, presentation. Yeah, yeah, I have a small presentation just to share you a bit of our work and what you can find on lands like when you get to Salvador and these areas of the Atlantic rainforest on the coast. Just let me know if you can see it and I can yeah. start. I see it loading up and let me bring it in. All right, Leo, we're good. Okay. So I work with Projeto Mantis, my institution, and we study these amazing insects, which are the praying mantis of Brazil. They come in all shapes and colors and sizes, and we are trying to uncover the hidden biodiversity, which means like we're looking for rare or new species like this beautiful kite mantis from the Amazon. I work with Lucas, who is a graphic designer. I'm a biologist, so we are this team walking in the rainforest. And we do mainly expeditions, scientific outreach, photography, and environmental awareness. So I, I think it has a lot to connect with Darwin 200 and this expedition that is uncovering the coast of many places that Darwin has been. So we also bring this cool aspect of science, which is bringing design into it. So we make science to look cool and amazing and appealing to everybody. And we work at night. So uh, usually people are going to sleep, we are going to the rainforest and we find this most teeming, vibrant biodiversity because in the rainforest, in the coast of Brazil, we have the Atlantic rainforest, which is not the Amazon, but it has a similar biodiversity in, in terms of uh, quantity. There's a lot to discover there. And when you go out at night at rainforest, that's when you find most of its biodiversity. And I'm going to share you a bit of our last journey on the Atlantic rainforest, which was Espiritu Santo a bit down from Bahia. The vessel is going to pass by Espiritu Santo when it goes to Rio de Janeiro. This beautiful rainforest, we were there looking for a specific kind of prey mantis, which is the largest prey mantis of Brazil, but it was known only for the Amazon. And we had this team, including Daniel Venturini here by my side. He was at Darwin 200 in Fernando de Noronha filming. He's a documentary uh, filmmaker and we found this amazing biodiversity there so you can see like crazy insects with those open wings all kinds of shapes and colors even butterflies sleeping we find a lot we found a lot of snails rain frogs and all kinds of weird shapes of frogs uh lichen katydids tarantulas which are usual more usual at least in the amazon but there because there's a link to this part of bahia and espirito santo to the amazon a past link they are not connected anymore that you can find a lot of tarantulas leaves that are not leaves they are katydids whose wings are shaped just like a perfect fresh leaf and when they open their wings it has like all of these colors and there we are taking our photos and documenting all this biodiversity, but looking for the praying mantis that we were looking for. So we found a lot of praying mantis there. This is the classic green one, uh, very big as well, but not the largest that we were looking for. We found the stick mantis of Brazil. We found the little brown mantis, which is very tiny. Some were very camouflaged, like the bark mantis. The unicorn mantis, which is unique. Uh, in this in South America and it's very beautiful you can see the little horn that gives its name the unicorn mantis the lichen mantis the first time I saw this one uh, we found new species like this one is a new species but it was not the one we were looking for we found the dry leaf mantis and we spent a week in the rainforest looking for this large one and by the end we were like uh, feeling a bit it was a success we found all this biodiversity but where was this big praying mantis 
And by the end of the last night at 4.30 in, in the morning, we finally found it. The largest mantis of Brazil, known only to Amazonia, now found on the Atlantic rainforest. So we just discovered the largest mantis of this coast uh, rainforest, the Atlantic rainforest. It's not a known species, so we're going to describe it. It has no name for science, and we are very proud to present this biodiversity that is still hidden. So, you know, like many naturalists like Darwin have been walking the rainforest of Brazil, the coast of Brazil for a long time, and a lot of researchers came after, but it's still there is a lot to discover because the biodiversity is huge. And that's why we have to protect it. That is the reserve. And on the other side, we saw that. So whatever we find land that is not protected, it's hard to keep the forest alive. So we have to keep pushing uh, our governments, our people to protect our rainforest and have them like this. So we can find new species like this one. I just brought it to finish Vatis Phoenix. It's a species we described in 2020. And this female was only found on the botanical garden of Rio, which is where Darwin was as well. So you're going to pass by Rio and you're going to see the place where this species was discovered in 2020. And this went back to the Museo Nacional, which is an amazing institution this year. There's a lot of new species. All of those are new species of mantis we're still describing. A lot of discover to discover in our rainforest in the land as well. And in 20 days, we are traveling to Amazon again for this expedition, Mantis Imaginary in Amazonia. So I hope you can follow our project, follow me and Lucas to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, go to our website and keep our work being visible for you. Thank you. And I have a, a guest surprise here. I'm going to stop share screening just a bit. Uh, where do we stop share screen? Yeah, got it. So with me, I have here a small praying mantis for you to appreciate. Can you see her here? This is a bit, uh, yeah. Now yeah, you can see her. So all of the praying mantis that we have, we take care of them. So we go to the rainforest, we collect them, and then we take care of them at our home. So we have a lot of praying mantis. You can see here on the back, all of them. And this one came from that expedition, actually, the one from Spirit Santo. It was a little, little baby when we found her. She's a bit suspicious now, but they are pretty charismatic animals. They are harmless to us. So you can see the big eyes. They have a good vision. And they are amazing, almost like a, a pet insect they are amazing animals that's really cool uh leo you mentioned their vision is pretty good so they've got pretty good vision yeah yeah they can see basically like us in 3d and all uh depth of field and everything but the difference is that we see better when images are still so things that are moving us humans we have like a less perception of the the vision when things are moving and they see things better when things are moving that's because they are hunters so they use their legs to catch uh other insects and they hunt live insects so they can see the moth or the cricket walking by or flying by to catch it precisely okay very cool and so leo if you had to make a guess because we're always finding more and it's a big world Roughly how many species of, of prey mantises have we discovered so far? Yeah, so in the world, we have discovered around 2,500 species everywhere. They are just not in Antarctica and the Arctic. So you can find them in deserts, rainforests, savannas, mountains, uh, boreal forests, uh, tundras, everywhere. Uh, different species, of course, different shapers, you saw it. And most of the diversity is in the tropics. So Brazil, for example, has 10% of this diversity. We have 250 species, but we expect that this number is going to double in the future. So there's a lot to discover yet. Yeah, absolutely. So cool. Uh, all right, I'm going to come back here and let's take a few questions, Leo, before uh, we let you go sure. today. So um, let's see. Let's bring in our grade sixes and see if they have some praying mantis questions for us. I bet they do. They're in Toronto, Ontario. Cool. Morning, Toronto. How are we doing? Oh, good. Um, 
Uh, how big is the biggest mantis that you found in Brazil? Oh, that's a great question. So it was like uh, 12 and something millimeter uh, centimeters. So it's like bigger than my hand. It's like almost the size of my face. It's very big. Yeah, and it's still harmless, right? So it's just like a big insect, but still harmless to us. Um, how do you get to name the mantises that you discover or who does? Yeah, when you discover a species, you get to name it, you formally describe it. So you have to find a nice name. So you saw that last one, Vatis Phoenix. We gave the name Phoenix. The genus Vatis was known. The species Phoenix is the name we gave because it was uh, in honor of the museum that caught fire but it's coming back from the ashes. So we give it the name Phoenix. And for this big one, we're still thinking about it. Like how should we name the largest mantis of Brazil? Well, that's a, 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 a tricky question, but we're still thinking about it. Okay. Thank you. All right, very cool. Thanks guys. Thank you. All right, let's grab a couple more questions here for you, Leo. So, um, being in the field, can you tell us a little bit about what your nights look like in the field? Yeah, so when sunset comes, we just start walking, we choose a trail we're gonna work on, and then we use flashlights and we walk very slowly because pregnancies are very camouflaged. So we are looking everywhere for them. On the floor, there are species that are on the bark of the trees, on the leaf litter, under the leaves, over the leaves. So this, we're basically scanning the whole rainforest looking for them. So it can take us like six hours to walk one kilometer. It's not much in walking, but it's a long time scanning all this patch of the rainforest. We go walking and looking with flashlights. Whenever we find one, we take all the data. So like, how is the temperature? Which kind of leaf is, is it living at? Uh, which kind of environment is around? If there's something special around, humidity, all the data. And then we collect it. Uh, we take photos, of course, in, with the live animal, then we collect it and start taking care. And in a very, very productive night, a very amazing night, we find around like 15 mantis. That is a very successful one. So you can see like in six hours, 15 mantis in a very successful one. Just, it needs a little bit of patience. But on that way, we see all kinds of biodiversity. So we see snakes, we see mammals, we see even like large mammals sometimes, like tapirs, or here, jaguars, we see all kinds of spiders, insects. It's an amazing work. All right. And so you mentioned they're so difficult to spot. Is that a skill that grows over time? Like, have you found over the years yeah. you get better and better at spotting them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, we even get unused it too. So when I spend a long time out of the forest, it takes me a little bit to start again to gain this expertise. So... Over the years, now I can spot like a praying mantis three meters from me. And sometimes it's just the antennae out of the leaf. And I can say like, okay, that's a praying mantis. So uh, the eyes get like somehow our brain is very special and the eyes get very trained to that. All right. Very cool. And Leo, what are some of the impacts, some of the, you know, the things that are affecting populations of mantises? Yeah, so basically the most harmful one is deforestation. You saw that comparison between the rainforest and the land that was not protected just on the other side of the road. So that's why, for example, we guess this large mantis was not known to science for a long time because most of its land has been wiped out. So they, without a forest, this mantis can't live. There are mantis that adapt like to places that have been deforested, but most of them won't adapt if they are rainforest species. So they are being harmed by deforestation. And then of course you have pesticides because when you have like a forest, but you're applying pesticides just by uh, the forest, maybe it's harming them. This is something that we gotta still research, but definitely it's gonna affect them. Okay. Well, Leo, thank you so much for joining us today. You're doing incredible work. Uh, I'm really excited for your next expedition. Hopefully we'll be able to catch you before you head out uh, on the next one, but we can't wait to see what you collect, what you and Lucas collect while you're in the field. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Darwin 200 for hosting me. I wish you like the best trip, 
this is an amazing project and please everybody keep following it because they have like a, a beautiful journey next place is Rio where I live so I'm very excited to follow it all right awesome Leo we'll see you a little bit later today thank you so much for being with hey. us